Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the dark side of the workshop. You can see I have a tractor tore in half right here. And I'm getting ready to put a new clutch in this. This is a 1960 MF35 tractor. I've got the old clutch out. That was fairly easy after you break the tractor in half. It takes about three to four hours to break the tractor in half if you're by yourself, you know, no help or anything. And I did that fairly well. Got her hanging up here on an engine, you know, uh, jack, uh, basically. It comes with a new bearing for this section, for this area right here. And the old bearing is doesn't even turn, so it needs to be replaced. There's no question about that. So how do you get this bearing out of here because it's pressed in? Well, you know, I thought about trying to pull all this off, but that looked like kind of a hassle, and I don't know what I'd get into there. So I've done this before, and I've seen it done on the internet too, but I have actually done it myself, and, and I know it works. I'm going to drive bread into here, believe it or not, I'm going to drive bread in here and pop this bearing out. give you a zoom up here on this. So here we go. We're going to give it a shot. So I'm, I've already crammed some bread in there, so I'm, I'm already a little bit ahead of the ball game here. So here we go. It's coming out. I can already see it. It's, it's lipped out about a, oh, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch or a little less right now. But at least it's coming out. It's amazing that uh, something like bread could pound in there hard enough to push back that, on that bearing hard enough to push it out of there. But it'll do it if you keep at it. So it's out of full eight now. You don't have to use your best bread. You can use stale bread for this. It don't really matter. <laughs> well, came out another sixteenth or so. We're out almost three sixteenths now, I'd say. Cram a little more bread in the hole there, and this ought to this ought to do it. I think. I would think. Well, very close, but not quite. A little bit more. I don't know if I should use the crust or not. <laughs> I don't think it matters. You just cram it in there. I got a whole piece of bread in there almost. Not quite a full piece of bread. There it goes. It's coming out now. There it is. Bingo. Now, how do you get the bread out of there? Well, you set the tractor outside and let the birds eat it out of there. No, I'm just kidding. I'll just take some time and dig it out of there. Looks like the seal. Looks like there might be a seal here or something. No, that's just the bread. <laughs> the bread's so packed in there, it feels like a seal. So anyway, there's most of the bread right there. I think that's all the bread, now that I look at it. Yep. There's a way you can knock a bearing out of a inside uh, deal like that as long as the of course it has to be closed on this end and it, and it is fortunately if that was all the way through you'd be wasting your time okay so there's the old bearing it don't it doesn't spin at all I can't it doesn't it's just locked up the new bearing spins freely it had to be replaced now I'll show you how I press it back in Okay, off camera I sprayed some cleaner in there and, and cleaned it out pretty good. And now I'm setting the new bearing in place and I'm trying to get it real straight. So I'm trying to get it to go, start in even. That's pretty even. And now I have a socket that just fits it just on the outside ring. You, you need to drive the outside ring, not the inside ring. And I'm just going to tap it lightly. Try to tap it all the way around. 
but you got to make sure you're on the outside ring. Tap all, on all four sides to try to make sure that it goes in even. It's almost all the way in. There it is. I think we're in there now. And make sure it still spins, and as long as you don't hit that inside, it'll still spin. But if you if you pound on this, you, you would ruin your whole bearing. So you only hit the outside edge. Well, there you go. That part's finished. Now for the fun part of lifting this big heavy clutch and getting all that stuff set up. In my younger days, I could just pick this up and stick that in there, and I could probably do it now. But I got older, smarter, and more tools. So I think I'll uh, just use the tools. And I've got my, you can't see it here, but I've got my remote for my lift. And we're just going to lift this up. Get that about the right height there. And then I don't have to do all that heavy lifting. Let's see, now the trick is, can I juggle all the parts and get them in here? Get this part on here. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's complicated. So you can imagine that the having to lift that heavy thing on it in addition to lining all this up would be a lot of fun. But uh, hopefully I can get it done here. I don't know. Can't really say for sure I can get it done, but I think I can. It looks like it's going to go. Bingo! Well, you know, there you go. So let's see if I can get this lined up with this and get it in the hole. I thought it was screwing in, but it didn't go in, so it fooled me. Let's try it again. I think I'm lined up well enough to get it to start. Did it start that time? No, nope, I think it's just fooling me. That was easier than I was expecting. And I'm kind of glad of that, I'll be honest. Let's see here, can I take the pressure off of this without dropping it? So far, bingo. So that's out of my way now. I can just get that out of the way. Put that up out of the way. As my buddy Mr. Bradshaw from ElderlyIron.com says, don't ever tighten any until you start them all. So I'm going to get them all started here. I think they're all started. That's like a miracle all by itself. Should be able to use my wrench and just get, pull them in. I'm just going to pull them in a little bit. I'm not going to torque them down yet. Just make sure they're all in there. This is something you definitely want to make sure you got good and tight because it's inside the tractor and you only get one shot at it. If these things would happen to come loose, you're tearing the whole tractor apart again. So I'm going to go find the torque specs on this and make sure I got them torqued down to the proper specs. Well, I'm at a little spot here where I really don't know what to do. I haven't torqued these bolts down yet, I'll just tell you that. But I know I need to remove these hold downs. It tells you that here. This is what keeps, the, I think, the springs compressed until you get this all tightened up. But then I know this is an alignment tool, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to slide back into this next set, and it won't go in there, and I figured it would probably be easier to align this before I loosen these, but I might be wrong. Maybe I have to take these off first. But I cannot get that to go in there right now, I can tell you that for sure. I've tried and tried off camera here, and it isn't going. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and take these off and see if that helps. If it may not help, it may hurt. I don't really know, honestly. I don't know whether or not that's a good thing to take them out or not. That, that's the truth of it. I'm just guessing at this point. All right, so I've got me a number 10 metric wrench here, and I'm gonna take these compression uh, screws out of here. I know that's all they do is just hold the springs down. 
maybe I could I could put those back in if I need to because it looks like there's plenty of thread there. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get it compressed and get them back in there, but it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now let's see if this will align better. I don't see how it could. Wow, feels even tighter now, I'll be honest. I can't move it at all now. It's not going in, but the clutch is pretty much aligned. I, I think I've got my splines aligned, so maybe that's as good as I can do with this thing. I would have thought this would have slid in there, but it sure doesn't do it. And I don't know if you're supposed to drive it in. Yeah, there it goes. It's going in there. I do think I'm aligned with it, so at least that part, I guess by taking the clutch off of there now, it's uh, got it. I, say, I wouldn't have thought that would have fit in there that tight. Boy, it just really is a pain. Well, I'll figure out a way to get that out of there. Well, quite honestly, I don't know if I'm aligned perfectly or not, but I think I am because I got this out of there and it did deform it just a teeny bit, but only a little bit and only on some of them. It didn't deform all of them, so I know it had to be in there fairly straight. I don't know. It's just crazy. But anyway, I think we're aligned. I thought I'd show you the difference. Here's what this one looks like now, you can see, and I'll zoom you in. You can see these bolts and everything in these arms. Let me show you the original one, how bad it looks. Here's the original one, you can see they're just ground off. Just horrible looking. So, really bad. So yes, it definitely did need to come apart, and yes, we definitely did to need to do all this. And especially that bearing was not working at all. We'll um, find the torque specs on this. That's the thing I'm going to do next, and then I'll show you my next step. Got my old school torque wrench here, and I found that it was 28 to 33 pounds, so 30 sounds pretty close to me. So let's see if we can get to that. Gotta get a little more light on this subject here. And uh, unfortunately the wheel's gonna turn, so nothing simple. If I had 14 hands, it'd be real simple. But I don't have 14 hands. It's just gonna spin on me and I can't hold it to get to the 30. So I'll have to figure that out now. Well, I've got a pry bar propped into one of these teeth. I'm hoping that'll hold it here against the floor while I can go to my 30. There's 30 right there. There's about 33 right there. So it's at least torqued to that. That's That was just with the uh, wrench. It seemed like it, oh, it's moving a little bit. So I guess the wrench didn't have it completely torqued. There's about 30 there. I guess it's good, I'm checking them. That one seems okay. Well, that one's quite loose. Wow, can't believe how loose that one was compared to the other ones. Yeah, that one's pretty, that's pretty close. It's funny how that wrench, you would have thought that wrench would have made them all the same, but it didn't. There we go, so I believe they're all at 30. I'm gonna check them all one more time. Like I said, you only get one chance at this. This is not something you wanna hurry up about. There it went again, so there's 30, so it that one needed it, so that's why you go back around there again. Yeah, that one slipped too. I think that's it there. I think we got it. Like I said, you don't get in any hurry on some things, and this is one of those things. You gotta realize that the whole tractor, all the power of the whole tractor comes out of this thing right here. I think we got it. Well, quite honestly, I don't really know how to do all this. I just figured out as I go, and that's the truth of it. But I can see these big springs are holding in this bearing, so I'm going to loosen those springs off. They're not that hard to take off, so I'm pretty sure I can put them back on. 
and then I'm taking out this throw out bearing here I think that's what this is called I'm not even sure if that's the right term but anyway uh, you can see it's galled up pretty good and uh, they, it comes with a new one I don't know if this is an actual bearing I think it is uh, I think it's supposed to spin I think but I'm not even sure of that yeah it is supposed to spin it does spin on this one but I don't think this one spins at all it doesn't spin at all so it's pretty war I'm noticing this is pretty war here too but it doesn't look like there's any real bad space on that so I think we're probably okay with that but now I'm gonna figure out how to press this off and I'll probably have to go to my press my actual press to get this off of here but we'll see. I'll figure out something and I'll show you what I figure out. Well, I know this isn't the best for the camera and all that, but uh, I basically made my own press. Uh, I have a Harbor Freight uh, pneumatic hydro air slash hydraulic jack up here at the top. You can't really see it. It's a 20 ton. I uh, have a foot pedal down on the ground for controlling the air. And I have this all set up here where I think it will work to press this bearing off. Um, I have a uh, large socket on the race. Um, well, I guess you'd call it, I don't know if that would be really, it's not really the race. Yeah, I guess it is. I don't know. Anyway, it's on something solid there and the bearing is sitting on these two blocks on the either side. And hopefully we can push the center out of the bearing, but let's see if that works. Oh yeah, working like a champ. Bingo. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. There's the old bearing and the old deal there and you can see it's froze up solid. It don't spin at all, not even a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm just, even though I don't think it would matter at all, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all up before I press on the new bearing. I know this bearing is meant to be pressed on um, in terms of the fact that the, the whole clutch plate rides on this, the whole clutch mechanism. So it gets pressed all the time, but I'm still a little bit leery about pushing on it with my press. So I'm going to lay this part down flat on a board and I'm going to press the center into it. I think that's probably the best way to go. You know, uh, you could argue six and one half, half dozen in the other. So, Anyway, that's what I'm going to try to do, but I'm going to have to let my press back up here a little bit to get it in there. There you go. It looks like it's going to fit and just getting it all aligned. And to me, that looks like that ought to work. So let's see what happens. like that's all she's got so I think we're there and it still spins so bingo pango we actually have a part that works now I'm amazed I love my little press my homemade press with my Harbor Freight air driven jack once again this may not be the best camera angle and all that but this is not Hollywood okay so I've got to put this back on here and uh, that feels right to me so far. It goes right back on there. And now we will pull up these springs. Now let's just see if they'll cooperate. And that may be the problem. Using my MIG pliers for this, seems like that's a pretty good choice actually. Well, I think we have success. Well, now there's a mark on that bearing right there that I don't think I did that. I didn't notice it before though. That's kind of weird. I don't know if that's to lock that into place on purpose or if that's just an accident. I don't think I did that. I really don't. I had this laying flat on a board so I don't think the board would have caused that. That's crazy. 
I don't know, but it's sticking down just a little bit, and I'm afraid that's going to rub something, so I'm going to take a file and just knock that little sharp edge off, just to be safe, because I don't think it should be there. Well, this little short file with, that's broken with a handle is just the perfect length for getting in here and working on this, so that's what I'm using. And again, I'm just knocking off the sharpness that's sticking out past this face surface here, because I don't think that should be there. Well, everything feels right there, so golly, as far as I can tell, I'm ready to put the halves back together here on this tractor. Hopefully this is going to line up. Now, you know, that alignment tool, it aligns that other part up, but what do you do with this is what I want to know. I guess this will just spin and align itself, I hope. I'm not really sure how you go about spinning these. I really don't. I, I'm kind of at a loss as to how that's going to line up in there. I just hope it works. Well, quite honestly, my friends, it's been at least 10 years since I've done this next procedure. Well, it's really been 10 years since I've done any of these procedures. But uh, I haven't pushed the tractor back together for at least that long. And I only did it one time in my whole life. And I did it all by myself then, and I'm doing it all by myself now. So let's see if it works. I really don't know. It's a total guess. Getting the height right is one thing, but getting everything else lined up is another. So, yeah, we'll see how well that goes. Quite honestly, I don't know. And we're leaking hydraulic fluid, wouldn't you know? Uh oh, turning those wheels is causing the hydraulic fluid to squeeze out. Looks like I need to go up a little bit with the engine side. Maybe down a hair with the other side. The thing about this is you can't really see what you're doing. You're just kind of doing it blind and hope it's working. You really can't tell whether you're the right height or not. And I'd say right now I'm not. I'd say I'm a little low on the motor end still. It's really hard to say. Well, that went pretty far, so I guess we're pretty good there. Now I think I'm a little bit high. It's like just a juggling game. I don't know which end's high and which end's low. I really don't. I'm going to get back and look at it a little bit. Well, I'm at a little bit of an impasse. Uh, it's close. Uh, the level looks good. Everything looks as good as I can get it to look, but it won't go in there. I don't think it's the alignment of the spline so much, although that's probably what it is. I mean, I think they're aligned in the clutch end, but I can't for some reason get it to line up the rest of the way here. I'm afraid it's gonna take it all the way back out to see what's going on. I'm afraid I'm gonna pinch my hand or something. I'll keep trying, but as far as I can tell, it's the right height and all that. Something's not working. I just don't know what it is. I would assume it's those splines. So I guess I'm gonna to try to take it out of there and see what happens. You know, the alignment tool, all I know is it just lines up the clutch itself. I'll have to look at that and see if I can figure it out. I pulled it out and put it back in, tried to make sure all the splines were aligned as best I can, and it's still just fighting me. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm sure it's just off by a fraction. Sure, that's all it is. I'm just sure that it's off by just a hair. Back of the tractor needs to come up based on the angle I'm seeing there. It looks better in alignment. Maybe that'll make a difference. It looks parallel now, at least. It should be closer to right now than it's been. I've decided I didn't do a good enough job with this alignment, so I've put these retaining bolts back in here to compress the springs. Now I can move this whole clutch plate around and move this tool around and I can tell I'm getting in there but I can also tell I don't have the end of this embedded in that hole through that bearing. So that's what I'm trying to do. Once I get that embedded in that hole then I think we're good to go. But we're not there yet. 
So I think that's my problem. I think my shaft wasn't going into that bearing and close, but I can't quite get it in there. I'm fighting it, so I'm not sure what the problem is. It seems like it ought to just go in there, but it's not. Uh, I'll figure that out and I'll show you how it looks once I figure it out. Well, I've got it pushed back apart again. That's the third time now. I have double checked the alignment on the clutch. That is all aligned. All the splines, the alignment tool goes in there perfectly. It's something on this end. What I'm suspecting is the problem. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but there's two shafts here and one spins around the other and it's getting these aligned and the problem is when I start sliding this together you know I can spin this but I can't tell what these are doing so I don't know like if I'm pushing against this and if I'm spinning that maybe this one's spinning equally so it's not changing position relative and you know and it could be the same thing with this other one too because they both spin independently so i can't get them to line up and i don't know how you can do that now the alignment tool i have doesn't address this end it only addresses the clutch end so i don't know what to do with that and i've i've tried everything i can think of including spinning the pto shaft in the back by hand but i don't know i'll have to figure something out i'll have to take it apart several times Confirming that the clutch part was aligned. It definitely was. That was not my issue. It was all in the bell housing here through the back end. And why it went together this time, I don't know. It just did. So I'm happy about that. I ain't going to complain. And now the short bolts actually do fit. So that must mean it's aligned because you couldn't put these short, short bolts in unless it was aligned. So. I'm just going to tighten her down now, just snug her up, do it real slow and easy. Well friends, I won't tell you it was simple because uh, it wasn't, but I got the tractor back together. It took me all day Saturday to get about two thirds of it done. And it took me pretty much all Sunday afternoon to get the other third done. Oh my gosh, every single thing that could absolutely 100% did, including bolts breaking off and yeah, just everything. I had to drill them out, re-thread things, exhaust leaks, just you name it, I had to fix a, a thousand things. But it's up in better shape than it's ever been. Let's see if it works. I, ju I just got done adjusting the clutch here, so let's see. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm turning the gas on right here. I'll move the camera here so that you can see if it starts and if it backs up and all that. Hopefully I don't run over the camera. That would just about be par for the course at this point. Here we go. Contact. Friends, Project MF35 break in half, new clutch is finished. Oh my gosh. That just about took everything I had and then a little bit more. And guess what? The good news is I get to do it again because I've got a John Deere 950 that needs the same thing except that it's even going to be much more fun because it has a front loader that has to come off before I can uh, do it. And it's not one of the modern front loaders that just push two buttons and pull a pin and it comes off. This has to be unassembled. Oh my gosh. It will probably never go back on the tractor after I take it off because it's that complicated. Oh, fun, fun, fun. No rest for the wicked. I know I didn't cover everything. I'm sorry about that, but trust me, I'd have had to edit out most of it anyway due to language concerns. <laughs> Thanks for watching.